Allied prisoners of war called them hell ships. The requisitioned merchant vessels that the Japanese Navy overloaded with prisoners of war being relocated to internment on the Japanese home islands, or elsewhere in the empire. The holes were floating dungeons, where inmates were denied air, space light, bathroom facilities, and adequate food and water, especially water. Thirst and heat claimed many lives in the end, as did summary executions and beatings, yet the vast majority of deaths came as a result of so-called friendly fire from US and Allied naval ships, submarines, and aircraft. Montevideo Maru became the first of the hell ships to be sunk by the US Navy, on 1 July 1942. The submarine, USS Sturgeon had been in pursuit of its target for several hours before finally launching a torpedo attack in the small hours of the morning. Within minutes of the first explosion, Montevideo Maru sank by the stern. There had not even been time to pump the holds or lower more than a few of the lifeboats. More than 1,000 Australian troops and 200 Australian administrative personnel, captured by the Japanese from New Guinea, the Bismarck Archipelago, and the Solomon Islands, went down with the ship. Perhaps the best documented sinking, from the perspective of the American victims, is that of Oreo Komaru which set off from Manila, in the Japanese-occupied Philippines, on 13 December 1944. The sinking of Oreo Komaru is exceptional not because the experience of its prisoners was unique per se, but because their experience is so well documented in testimony collected after the war. Oreo Komaru had been built as a luxury liner just before the war, but was requisitioned for its new purpose shortly thereafter. At least 1,600 Allied prisoners of war were crammed into its hold at Manila. Most of the POWs who boarded Oreo Komaru on 13 December 1944 had been in custody since the Bataan Campaign of 1942 and had survived some of the war's most notorious death marches. They were now exceedingly weak and malnourished. The following morning, 14 December, the pilots of U.S. Navy planes from USS Hornet caught sight of Oreo Komaru and its convoy off the east coast of Luzon. By 8 a.m., Hornet dive bombers were on the offensive. They returned two hours later to continue the attack. According to an eyewitness account on board, it was at this point that Oreo Komaru's escort ships fled the scene and left the liner to its fate. Damaged in the air attacks, the ship limped into Subic Bay to offload injured Japanese passengers. On the morning of 16 December the ship came under further attack from Navy aircraft from USS Hornet. Japanese guards ordered all soldiers to evacuate by jumping overboard and swimming to shore. Aircraft commenced another bombing run and were almost overhead the ship before realizing that those fleeing into the water were indeed their own and ceased firing. Many soldiers lost their lives during the bombing raids and during the swim to shore. Of the 1,600 soldiers loaded onto the ship in Manila there were less than 1,400 counted during a roll call soon after evacuating the ship. Most of them were loaded onto another requisitioned merchant ship, which subsequently sank off the coast of Taiwan. Only 432 soldiers made it to Japan alive and of those another 161 perished on Japanese soil, leaving only 271 still alive from the original group of prisoners that departed from Manila. Approximately 1,540 Allied prisoner of war deaths resulted from conditions in the holds and violence aboard hell ships, whereas more than 19,000 deaths came as a consequence of Allied attacks.